In this episode of Satan Splain, we'll take a look at the new film Realm of Satan, also addressing false claims about the serial killer Richard Ramirez and the Church of Satan. No, he was never a member, nor practiced what we believe. And answering listener questions about the Universal Life Church and satanic weddings, membership privacy, and other topics as well. Well, it's not Satan worship, it's Satanism. It's embracing the life-enriching things which have traditionally been given the devil's name. Pride, lust, earthly success, rational self-interest, atheism, humor, nonconformity, science, a passion for living, being selective about whom we love. We don't see these as shameful sins, but empowering ideals. And we also recognize the psychological power and fun of symbolism and aesthetics, so we utilize Satan as mythology's most fitting mascot for what we're about. Satan Splain. Satanic Talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. Magister Bill M. here with Satan Splain. Recently, a film debuted at the Sundance 2024 Festival. The film is called Realm of Satan. Let's jump right in and take a closer look at that. This is from the newsfeed at churchofsatan.com. I'm going to read it to you now. This is directly from the High Priest, Peter H. Gilmore. Magus Gilmore writes, Realm of Satan debuts at Sundance 2024. Magistra Barton, Magna Dramia, and I were honored to attend and support Scott Cummings' masterful first feature, a project first proposed to us nine years ago. All good things to those who wait. It is a challenging film, not at all a typical didactic documentary, and its approach clearly goes over the heads of some viewers. Gizmodo reviewed it and got the entire point of this fascinating work, essentially conceived to function as a visual ritual. Please read Cheryl Eddy's succinct and perceptive review. And here uh, there's a link given to the review, which I will read after I read this. The film's distribution is currently being negotiated, so in time we will let you know how to view it as it goes wide. Now, there were uh, tickets available for an online streaming, and the window to see that is gone, so I'm not going to bother you with those details. But speaking of details you don't need, there have apparently been a number of reviews uh, for Realm of Satan written by people who clearly don't get it. Uh, Especially people who are expecting Satanism to be something that it isn't. I've noticed that whenever there's a documentary or even an interview involving people from the Church of Satan, there are people who complain about us either way. Um, If we're shown to be too dark or evil, people complain that we're either not a threat or conclude, oh, we just dress funny and that's that. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't wear my ritual robe as I go out and about during my day, like to the post office or doing laundry or whatever. And if... It's not that, then, you know, and there's a documentary or article about us that portrays us as pretty reasonable and down-to-earth people. Then we get whiners in just the opposite direction. Well, these people are just boring. They're not entertaining me. I don't understand why these people call themselves Satanists. So I realize, my, my point here is, I realize you can't win with these dweebs, especially film critics. Satanism is not for the masses. The best you can do is correct misinformation and thus make it easier for the actual Satanists to get access to actual satanic resources and networking with actual fellow Satanists. Having said that, sometimes you do find people who get it and can report on things pretty accurately. So I would now like to read you that aforementioned article from Gizmodo. Realm of Satan brings dark glamour to a misunderstood culture. Scott Cummings' documentary, made in collaboration with the Church of Satan, just debuted at the Sundance Film Festival. Realm of Satan was created in collaboration with the Church of Satan, the religion that was founded by Anton LaVey during San Francisco's 1960s counterculture heyday. Rather than a straightforward exploration of the religious organization and its philosophies, Realm of Satan takes a more visual, experimental approach. Moving through vignettes that spotlight various Church of Satan members as they perform rituals, enjoy each other's company, go about their daily business, and so on. Watching the film is almost like flipping through a motion scrapbook. On one page, 
We see a man in full corpse paint hanging his laundry out to dry in his otherwise unremarkable backyard. Funny, I I didn't even uh, think about that with my laundry reference <laughs> earlier. Anyway, continuing with the article. Well, on the next, a different man makes intense eye contact with the camera while performing a series of incredible card tricks. A content warning affixed to the film and the fact that it's about, you know, Satanists make it seem like the realm of Satan would be a lot racier than it is. While there's some nudity and a few explicit sequences, it's overall a rather, rather elegant, artistically dynamic film. Certainly participants make repeat appearances, but a narrative never really emerges beyond the feeling that everyone depicted is part of a coherent movement celebrating individuality. Reference is made to the way broader culture doesn't always understand what the Church of Satan is about, in the form of a news clip dealing with an arson fire that destroyed one member's gorgeous home. But mostly there's a sense that the participants are deeply comfortable with and committed to their lifestyles. It must be said, however, that the still unsolved crime was made even worse by a repeated theme throughout the documentary, which is that these people have really, really good aesthetic taste. Dark wood, red velvet curtains, and immaculate collections of statues and books background the impeccably dressed members who never speak to the camera, but frequently, like that magician, make eye contact with the viewer, acknowledging a sense of artifice and the performative nature that propels this unusual documentary. Further playing with genre conventions, occasionally Cummings takes things to a more surreal magical level, showing us a woman levitating, a crystal ball speaking, or a man striding from behind a kitchen counter to reveal he has goat legs and a huge pair of goat balls. You didn't think Satanists got this far without a sense of humor, did you? Realm of Satan just premiered at the Sundance Film Festival. Visit Films is handling worldwide sales and a release has not yet been announced. And that concludes the article from Gizmodo. Now, I myself did not get a chance to see this, but I'm sure I will once it gets a more proper release. I am not in the film itself, at least not as far as I know, but I do know some people who are in it. And moving on, I have been asked in interviews and the like what purpose the Church of Satan serves. And my personal answer is that the Church of Satan, in summary, has a twofold purpose, an internal purpose and an external one. The Church of Satan is made up of its members, so internally, it is an actual organization in the real world through which we can affiliate and network. I talked a lot about this in episode number 17 of Satan's Plane, so I'm not going to repeat all of that here, but externally, externally the organization is... Well, it's good to have an official go-to place to represent Satanism when that's needed for the media or for court cases or scholars and so on. And as a Church of Satan media rep myself, I have been on TV and radio shows to talk about Satanism. I've been interviewed in newspapers from several different countries. I've been a guest on some people's independent podcasts and the like. And a few weeks ago, I got this message through a social media page regarding serial killer Richard Ramirez. So I would like to read you the original letter and then read you my response. First, the letter. Hi, we're doing research on serial killer Richard Ramirez for a project, and there's so many rumors swirling around about his involvement with the Church of Satan, most of which I know are bullshit, but we'd like to hear if the Church of Satan has any actual statements on him. Would love to hear your thoughts on the matter as well. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, so I wrote back through the page to this fellow who wrote to us, Matthew. I said, hi, Matthew. This is Magister Bill M. from the Church of Satan. First, as I'm sure you already know, the Church of Satan has never condoned the beliefs and practices of criminal Richard Ramirez. He was not a Satanist, but rather by all accounts a devil worshiper. Unlike devil worshippers, Satanists view Satan as strictly metaphorical. The Church of Satan also explicitly rejects criminal activity in general. 
Some interviews claim Ramirez found inspiration in the Satanic Bible, but a look at that or our other literature shows that Satanism does not condone his crimes, nor his demented supernatural beliefs. For example, rape is explicitly condemned in the Satanic Bible. There is also no evidence of Ramirez ever having been a member of the Church of Satan. There are stories of him allegedly trying to visit Anton LaVey at our original headquarters in San Francisco, but by that point in our history, our activities were no longer open to the public. If a stranger showed up unannounced, they would understandably not have been welcome and would have been told to leave. There is a false story that has been going around claiming that Zena LeVay visited Ramirez in prison and made him an honorary member. We know this story is blatantly false because Zena, who left the Church of Satan, I believe, over 30 years ago, never at any time had the authority to grant memberships. Furthermore, Ramirez's conviction as a criminal by that point would have disqualified him from being able to join the organization anyway. So that was my answer, and he thanked me for the reply. And I figured, you know, I would read both of those to you on the show. Since if he had questions about Ramirez and the Church of Satan, then I'm sure there might be other people who had questions about it. So hopefully those have been answered now, or you learned something new anyway. And uh, allow me to give a little rant here. If you've spent any time on social media, you'll run across somebody who whines, "Eh, you're being a gatekeeper when you say that you're a Satanist and this person is not a Satanist. And to that, that I say, yeah, you're damn right. I'm being a gatekeeper. Satanism needs gatekeeping. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of misinformation out there about Satanism. Do you think we should just sit back and let serial killer lunatics like Richard Ramirez claim that their vile acts are Satanism? Not say anything when the media reports that as well? Or how about, if you want a more modern example, what about people like Alex Jones who say that child sex traffickers and global bureaucrats and the like are Satanists? Well... I'm not going to stay up all night trying to seek out and correct every nut like that. You know, I I would just, I would never get to sleep if that was the case. But at the same time, I'm not going to take it all lying down either. And if you, listener, if you are a Satanist, you should not take this lying down either. I'm not saying that all Satanists should come out of the closet and be activists for Satanism which wouldn't really make any sense anyway, since Satanism by definition is adversarial. It's not for the masses. We are not here for mass approval. But, but I will occasionally see people who pretentiously say, well, as a Satanist, I am my own God, and I don't care what people think about me. Well, I care what people think about me if, if, at the very least, it's going to affect my personal safety. You know, I don't want the FBI raiding my house just because they heard I'm a Satanist and think this means I have dead bodies in my basement, just as an example. So the next time you see somebody whining that the Church of Satan or some other Satanist is being a gatekeeper, implying that that's a bad thing for, you know, some weird philosophical freedom of expression reason, well, just tell them two words, Richard Ramirez. Or if they want two more, Alex Jones. Or hey, if you want two more, how about Kevin Soling? So yeah, Satanism does need gatekeeping. Let's move on to some listener mail. This next reader has asked that he be anonymous, so I will withhold his name on the air. But he writes, Hi, Bill. I've been a longtime listener of your show, but for the life of me, I'm not sure if this question has been answered or addressed yet. What is the Church of Satan's stance on active members claiming satanic priesthood status that has not been granted by the church itself? I have seen members who are ordained through the Universal Life Church, which does grant legal ordainment for ceremonies such as marriage. 
as someone who has applied for ULC ordainment in the past, and as far as I know, I am still legally a reverend of that organization, it begs the question, is this permissible or just cheap title chasing via circumventing the Church of Satan's meritocracy? I do not see how it is ethical to call oneself a satanic reverend on the grounds of one religious organization while being a member of another that offers their own ordainment by invitation based on merit. As I said before, I am technically still an ordained reverend of the ULC, but I do not claim any rights of being a satanic priest just because I also happen to be a Satanist. So this was a good question, and I talked briefly about the Universal Life Church back in Satan's Plain, episode number 39. Let me try to summarize what I said there. So when it comes to marriage, any two adults in the world, Satanist or not, can go have a wedding. They can wear wedding rings, they can call each other husband and wife, or husband and husband, or wife and wife, whatever, but... If you want your marriage to be legally recognized, that is recognized by the government, then there are some additional steps you have to take. Many people do this because there are a number of legal benefits to being recognized by the government as a person who is married to this other person. To get your marriage legally recognized, at least here in the United States, you have to have your wedding conducted by somebody who has that power of state. So typically, typically this is a religious minister. So a priest or a, a pastor or a rabbi or whatever, that person has to do a one-time filing of some paperwork with the state in order to clear that authority, but then they can legally officiate as many weddings as they're hired for. You know, officiate, conduct a wedding ceremony such that the people getting married are legally married. Now, I said typically the wedding officiant is a religious minister, but it doesn't have to be a religious minister. You can get a judge or a justice of the peace, for example, to perform your wedding ceremony. When people go to Las Vegas and get a wedding uh, conducted by an Elvis Presley impersonator, I, I had a friend who did that. Um, that guy in the Elvis costume is still in some way or another a registered officiant with the state of Nevada and has has that legal power to go do that. But when it comes to religion, the Church of Satan is indeed a religious organization recognized by the U.S. government, and some of our priesthood members are available in different states to conduct weddings. I am a legally ordained minister with my state. I went through the paperwork and I have the legal power to officiate weddings as a clergy member of the Church of Satan. And if you have somebody like me conduct your wedding here in the state, and we all sign, you know, the, the marriage certificate together, and you file it with City Hall, then your marriage is just as legally valid as if you were to have had your wedding ceremony done by a priest in a Catholic church or a rabbi in a Jewish temple, or whatever. Okay, so what if you are not an actual religious minister, Satanist, Christian, or otherwise, and you are not a government official like a judge, but you want to conduct weddings, you want to be a wedding officiant, you want to officiate weddings, make them all legally bound. Say your best friend wants to have a wedding and he wants you to conduct it. Or say there's a celebrity you want to have as your wedding officiant and the celebrity agrees to it. Well, this brings us to an organization called the Universal Life Church. You see, back in the 1960s, some people thought, hey, how about we just make a church where we can, we can let anybody become a clergy member for the sole purpose of being able to officiate weddings. And that's really all the Universal Life Church is, so far as I know. If you wanted your best friend or a celebrity, for example, to conduct your wedding instead of a priest or a judge or whatever, well, you can get that person registered with the Universal Life Church. You, 
you know, you, you you let the organization take care of the paperwork and so on. But when you're done, that person is now a quote unquote clergy member registered with your state who can conduct your legally binding wedding ceremony. So getting back to this anonymous listener's question. It is entirely possible to be a member of both the Church of Satan and the Universal Life Church. If you are a Church of Satan member, we generally don't care whatever other organization you join, so long as one, it's not a criminal organization. If you're a Church of Satan member, but you know, you're also spending your weekends in the mafia or knocking over banks. Yeah, we don't condone that. Satanists already have enough problems as as it is with false accusations of criminal activity. So we don't allow that, or two, we don't want our members joining organizations who have an axe to grind with the Church of Satan. These organizations who actively bash Anton LaVey or claim to be some sort of new evolution or replacement for the Church of Satan and a new voice of Satanism. In short, pseudo-Satanic groups. We're not going to put up with that bullshit. So the Universal Life Church is neither an illegal organization nor is it a pseudo-satanic organization. Again, it's just a way to let people become wedding officiants if they're not government employees or actual religious ministers. So I don't see a problem in and of itself with a Church of Satan member also being a Universal Life Church minister. but. As the listener points out, here's where the confusion comes in. Let's say you are a member of the Church of Satan and a priest of the Universal Life Church, which is what I guess all of their members are. Can you go around telling people that you are therefore a satanic priest? I mean, technically, I suppose it's true. But again, this listener brings up a valid concern. That statement could be taken out of context to falsely imply you are a priest and an official representative of the Church of Satan. So I wrote back to him and I told him where it would get confusing is, for example, hanging, if you're hanging out in satanic circles, if you hang out on internet message boards for Satanism discussion or Satanism social media pages, or saying this in person, or, or say the media or an academic wants to interview you because you're a Satanist to talk about Satanism. In that situation, throwing around a title like Reverend without any further clarification would certainly come off as a bit deceptive if you know you said you if you were to throw around this universal life church priest title without clarification. If you hang out on a Church of Satan message board and your username is Reverend Joe, again, that's going to be a bit misleading. So the bottom line is I would discourage that. Maybe you could have a signature or a profile or something that reads Joe, member of the Church of Satan and Reverend of the Universal Life Church. That's fine. Or, Or just don't bother mentioning both things when you don't have to. That's my advice. Let's take a break right now. You are listening to Satan's Plane. You are listening to Satan's Plane, real satanic talk with Church of Satan Magister Bill M. For questions, comments, and correspondence, send an email to bill at satansplane.com. Handmade, all-natural, botanical perfumes, soaps, and ceremonial incense, sculptures, and jewelry to adorn yourself and your other altars. All this and more await you at moonandsunemporium.com. Ritual perfumes and other occult fine art luxuries, created and curated by me, Priestess Sarah Josephine Clark with tarot readings by Reverend Dr. Dylan Clark, moonandsunemporium.com. Do satanic cults lurk in the shadows? Can memories of satanic ritual abuse be repressed? Do exorcisms really drive out demons? And are those demons always possessing Zach Baggins? I'm JD Sword, the satanic skeptic. 
Join me on The Devil in the Details as I examine these questions and more, bringing a skeptical and satanic perspective to the paranormal. The Devil in the Details, available on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, and more. Magister Bill M. with Satan Splain. There are many ways to listen to Satan Splain. You can listen to episodes right on the official website, satansplain.com. You can also find Satan Splain on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Audible, and other places as well. Please give the show likes and follows on social media, namely YouTube, X, and Facebook. And finally, for all correspondence, email me directly. Bill at satansplain.com is the email address. Another email here, Johnny writes, Hey Bill, I've been a member of the church for five years now, and I've finally been wanting to buy a registered membership. My job is very public, and I usually practice Satanism privately. My question is, if I buy a membership, will my details be private? So I explained to Johnny that I found this email of his a little confusing, because if you've been a member for five years, then that tells me you already joined the Church of Satan, that you've already paid your membership and received it five years ago. <laughs> If you never got a membership, then you're not a member. You can certainly be a Satanist and not join the Church of Satan. That's entirely optional. If you read the Satanic Bible and you find that it describes you and your convictions, then you're a Satanist. We make it quite clear on the Church of Satan website that membership in the Church of Satan is not required in order to simply be a Satanist. But you still nonetheless are not a member of the Church of Satan until you join the Church of Satan. That's, I mean, that's the way organizations in general work. Now, maybe this was a language issue or something, and maybe Johnny meant to say he's identified as a Satanist for five years. I don't know. But uh, in any case, getting to the privacy issue, yes, personal details of our members are kept private. If you join the Church of Satan and never tell anybody you remember, nobody will know but yourself and the central office. I got an email here next from Gage. Gage writes, Hi, Magister Bill. I've been listening to Satan's Plan for a while now. I'm nearly caught up, currently on episode 45, and I had a question I've been wanting to ask. I was curious as to what I would have to do to get approval to record audio versions of Church of Satan books. Besides the obvious, needing proper equipment, programs, etc., Also, I am not a member of the church. I know that might complicate things. I also know that the Church of Satan books are copyrighted materials, and you seemed like the best person to ask. Okay, so I told Gage that, as he correctly states, the books are copyrighted works. As with any book, when you you make an audio book version of a book, you are essentially publishing a version of that book. And copyright does extend to audio recordings, not just print. So thus, just as with a print book, you would need permission and licensing in order to make an audio book. Otherwise, it's like copying a CD and selling the copy. You're making and distributing copies of something copyrighted without the owner's permission, and that is illegal. Now, the Church of Satan is not the publisher of the Satanic Bible. We are the religious organization who represents the religion described in the the Satanic Bible. Our founder wrote the Satanic Bible, but we are not a book publisher. The Church of Satan is not a book publisher. Anton LaVey's first two books are held by HarperCollins Publishing, formerly Avon. His other three books are from Feral House Publishing. The Satanic Scriptures, and I think uh, Magister Rose's Infernalia, for example, are both on Scapegoat Publishing, yet another publisher. And then you have other books which are published more uh, independently. For example, Magister Matchy Paradise's Bearing the Devil's Mark is from his own independent publishing, Purging Talent Publishing. There were also essay compilation books, I Myself Am In, which were put out by Dark Moon Press as you know, another example. So for whichever book you would want approval for recording an audiobook, 
you would have to contact the respective publisher of that work and find out what needs to be done from there. From what I've seen, HarperCollins is the toughest to get any kind of response or agreement from. But it's not impossible, because after all, uh, Magister Merciless got the licensing to make a limited run of combination Satanic Bible, Satanic Ritual hardcovers back in 2016. I have one of those myself. So I'm going to move on. I have one final email I'm going to read for today. I'm sorry, I don't have I don't have a, a, a satanic dote. I know I've missed those now twice in a row. So you, if you got a satanic dote, you know, a satanic anecdote, you can email me, bill at satansplain.com. But with that, let's get to our final email. This is from Ampy. Ampy says, I am a frequent listener of your awesome podcast and subscribe to your Dr. Vincent Schitt's Facebook page. So thank you for that, Ampy, and thanks also to the other people who've showered me with praise in the emails. If I read your letter today and I didn't thank you, um, just thanking you again now. Anyway, continuing with Ampy's letter, I have seen the meme on compassionate Satanism and found it hilarious and can just imagine how grating that would be for sanctimonious satanic temple followers. Would it be possible to put into words your main objections of the concept and why the Church of Satan considers it non-satanic and incompatible with the principles of legitimate Satanism? Thanks for a great show. Regards, Ampy. So I wrote back to Ampy. Glad you enjoyed Dr. Schitz. The demented author of that compassionate Satanism book blocked me on Twitter, along with others who called her out on her bullshit. As for where she and others like her missed the boat, I think the biggest problem is not just the content, which isn't all that researched or original, but the whole this whole underlying approach. In the Satanic Bible, LeVay points out the hypocrisy of self-proclaimed white witches, such as Wiccans. These are people who on the one hand, want to indulge in the dark, esoteric nature of being a self-proclaimed witch who can cast spells and maybe instill a little fear or unease in people. Yet, on the other hand, also wants to be seen as a force for good, a white witchcraft practitioner. And to me, it's like Christian metal. It just doesn't work. You can't be both a sanctimonious do-gooder and a rebellious badass at the same time. In fact, the very, very first Satanism article I ever wrote and got published was back in the late 1990s. And it was an essay I wrote about a very popular bumper sticker at the time. I was reminded of this because I actually ran into the sticker, or rather I ran into a patch version of it in a uh, used uh, vintage shop. But uh, the sticker, this bumper sticker, was a very simple three-word bumper sticker. You might remember it. The words were, mean people suck. And in my article that I wrote, I argued that similarly, the people who buy these stickers, you know, they want to be sanctimonious for denouncing mean people, whoever that may be, and all, but like simultaneously saying they suck to sound a bit edgy. Saying something sucks, by the way, used to be considered really offensive back in the day. I think the phrase got desensitized throughout the 1990s with Wayne's World and Beavis and Butthead using it so much, it, it kind of softened it. But anyway, likewise, trying to retain the badge of Satanism, but watering it down to some altruistic humanist bullshit practice, it, it just doesn't work and it doesn't make any sense. And no, doing that is not, by the way, an example of being an individual or you know, resisting the gatekeeping. It, it's just embarrassing hypocrisy. We chose the name Satanism in the first place for the reasons I explain in the Satanism, the, the Satan's Plain intro. This isn't something for the timid or for pacifists. It, it's Satanism. And uh, the author of, of this work, Star, she goes by, uh, especially shows her cluelessness when she makes erroneous claims in her book, like, the Satanic Bible was largely plagiarized from Ragnar Redbeard's Might is Right. Okay, first of all, 
Anton LaVey never hid the fact that he got some lines from that long out of print public domain work. Might is right. But uh, more importantly, the part of that makes up about 2.2% of the entire number of pages in the Satanic Bible. Yes, I did the math. So this lady either has never read the book in her own hands or never held the book in her own hands for that matter, or she's lying. It's especially funny that she denounces might is right yet is in the satanic temple. Given that Doug Maseko, AKA Lucian Greaves himself did the illustrations for an edition of the book back in the early mid two thousands. In fact, the very first time in my life I ever heard of Doug before I met him in person in 2005, when he was a church of Satan member, it was actually through uh, Shane Bugby who pointed out that uh, who printed that might is right edition. And Shane was telling me at the time about some artist friend of his named Doug who had begged him to, to do the artwork. Now, getting back to this sort of vague, the sort of vague things that Satanic Temple and this author try to ascribe to Satanism. There is nothing in Satanism that says a Satanist can't decidedly be a political activist, say. We have Church of Satan members who do consider themselves such. Like the Satanic Bible says, it is up to the individual to decide what their own duties are to their country and community. There is nothing Satanic about being a complete scumbag to every person you meet. But to try to say Satanism is about empathy, that's just delusional. As Satanic Statement number four says, kindness to those who deserve it. As Satanic Statement number five says, vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. The whole notion of trying to do things like philanthropy, empathy, etc. in the name of the Prince of Darkness makes zero sense. It doesn't even make sense as some kind of ironic way to prove a point to Christians. There's no point in baiting Christians just for a cheap thrill. Which brings us to satanic statement number six. These people are psychic vampires. That's the best way I can summarize satanic temple. So in short, it seems that uh, the author of compassionate Satanism and, you know, the star lady and other satanic temple members seem to be under the delusion that a Satanist is just anybody who hates Republicans. That seems to be their working definition. So far as I can tell, that was the end of my letter and I will end the episode on that note. Thank you for listening till next time. Hail Satan. You have been listening to Satan's Plane. For more information about the show, visit the official website at satansplane.com. And for more information on Satanism itself, visit churchofsatan.com. This episode is copyright 2024, Magister Bill N.